Welcome to NDG Group. This is our Tuesday Family Bible Study, and we welcome you into our study. And before we get started, I would like to say my family wants to thank David and Judith White for their support. We want to thank them for the, the uh, eggs and the uh, garden vegetables. My family really enjoyed it and we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your support of our ministry as well. And <clears throat> before we get into our Bible study, I want to ask every one of you if you will remember the Goodwin family. And I want you to pray for them in their hour. And I, I stand here today because of uh, Elder Julius Goodwin Sr. Because I was in the Leavenworth prison and he's the man that came and taught me that there was a service that wasn't on Sunday. It was on Wednesday. He introduced me to the Word of God, and not only that, but not knowing me for any period of time, and I was a, a street hustler from Chicago, and I think I would broken every law of God and of man, and he came and put, he and his wife, Ruby Goodwin, put their house up to get me out on bail, and I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that family. They not only did that, but they allowed me, a man that had spent so many times in jail to live in their home when there was Elder Goodwin, Ruby Goodwin, Ruby uh, Sharon Goodwin, and uh, uh, Keith Goodwin, and they allowed me to be there. So they showed me something that I've never, and I will always remember that family. And if I'm able to ever do anything, I stand here today as a result of what they did for me. Because had not I gotten out, I wouldn't be here today. And so therefore, I want you to remember them in their time and help them in any way that you can. And I say to uh, any of the family that is watching that if I can do anything, I would certainly be more than glad. Just call me, text me, or whatever the case may be. But I want to lift them up in prayer along with <clears throat> thanking God for the family and your family and my family. Heavenly Father, we come before thy throne of grace, Lord, and we come with thanksgiving in our heart. Lord, we know that you know all things. And Lord, that all things work together for your will. Amen. To them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. And Lord, tonight I pray that you would impact our lives and cause our families to be united. We are in the month of, of August and, and this is 2021, a time of bringing our families together. Amen. Because God is calling us into unity out of denominations, out of religion, into a relationship. So be with us tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. We noticed that <clears throat> that I had said uh, that we were, we were not going to beat a dead horse. Well, <clears throat> it's unfortunate that, that we didn't finish uh, talking about, and I told you that I, I certainly know that we are fighting enemies. We are fighting enemies above us, which is the devil, around us, which is the world, and the greatest enemy we fight is from within us. And that's why it's so important. And even tonight, if I can't finish tonight, I'm going to continue it. Because I think that uh, that's where the problem is, is we don't know how to deal with this old fleshly nature. And so, therefore, I want to get to, and I don't want to continue to go over things that we've already gone over, but I want to bring out three points to you. 
I, I, and uh, we started on one of them last week of talking about uh, amputation. And I do want to uh, go to the scriptures tonight, and we want to go to the book of Galatians because it lays the foundation to show you that there is a spiritual warfare. And that it says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things you would. This is believers fight this. Because an unbeliever is already in sin. But a believer comes out of sin, but he enters into the wilderness, which is a type of the unsurrendered life. That's why... We need to, as believers, learn to live in the promises of God, living in the promised land. Jesus wants us, amen, to live like heaven on earth. That's what he came to give us the power to do, is to live like heaven down here upon this earth. And you know John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but he said he come that we could have life and have an abundance of it. So if you as a believer are not living in the abundance of life, well then you need to check out the flesh because you might still be in Egypt or you're in the wilderness or you are living, not living in the promises of God. So <clears throat> I, I quickly, and I'm not going to, and here's what I, I really want to do is I want to instill in each of you that are watching a hunger the Bible says, he that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. See, so there's got to be a hunger. You've got to have a hunger for the word of God. Amen. We've, we've got to learn how to develop that, that hunger. And, I, and I, I, I pray God that you would take uh, time and spend. So I, I want to show you, amen, some things that the Word of God teaches us of how we can overcome the flesh. And the first one is by amputation. We talked a little bit about it. And I'm not going to spend time on it because I want you to go to YouTube and I want you to subscribe to those videos that will tell you how to deal with your flesh. I want you to be hungry enough or dissatisfied with being dissatisfied that you do something about it. You know, you can't, it's going to take a step forward to go, to start the motion. Once you start, you can keep on and you'll learn, amen, from the word of God. Amen. So, if you will go to uh, the scriptures with me in the book of Matthew, and we want to look at uh, quickly. I'm not going to talk much about it, but I want you to see it. Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 8th and the 9th verse. It says, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut it off and cast them from thee. It's better for thee to enter half uh, life, enter life halt or maim rather than having two hands or feet to be cast in everlasting life. So there are some things that we can cut off. We can cut off bad relationships. We can cut off uh, uh, doing all the things that we know that are wrong. Remember I told you that the word of God is quick, it's powerful, and it's sharper than a two-edged sword. So it will, the Bible, the teachings of the word of God will accuse you or it will excuse you when you get into the Word of God. Because you'll learn some things that you shouldn't be doing. And you know some things that you shouldn't be doing just by, amen, just by living. You know things that you shouldn't do. If you know that, that you've got uh, diabetes, well, stop eating so much. And stop, you know, those are some things you can stop. You know, and, and so therefore we've got to exercise some discipline and self-discipline is probably the, 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 the greatest discipline that we can. And so it's saying anything that you know, I, like I said, I don't want to spend much time, but go to YouTube and, and download, amen, the video that I explain a lot of things about it. Because I certainly don't want you to cut your hands off. I don't want you to pluck out your eyes. Go to the next verse. You know, and that's what it says. So there are some things, some relationships you don't need to be tied up with. And you know that yourself. You know, and it says, if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. 
You know things that affect you. You know things that are uh, looking at pornography. Is it right for you to look at pornography? You know? You know, all those kinds of things. You know, and pluck it out, cast it from you. So some things you can stop and you know it. Now I'm going to go to the next verse, and this is the second reason, because I, again, don't want to be a, a dead horse. So therefore, I want you to go to the scripture, and this scripture is found in Romans 8.13, and I talked about it from Colossians 3, but I'm not going to spend time uh, dealing with that tonight. Say, for if you live after the flesh, listen carefully. If you live after what look good, what feels good, and what make you think that you're smarter uh, than anyone else, you shall die. But if you through the spirit, now this is the big S, the divine spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, and uh, the Bible say you're going to live. So there are some things that you can't cut off because they are more internal than they are external. You see, because, and, and you need to mortify them. You need to kill them. See, and that means that your living flesh, it, it needs to die. That's what uh, mortality is, is death, you know. And there are some things that you can mortify, you know. And it takes, and because it's not external, it's more internal. What are you talking about? I'm talking about how do you mortify weakness? How do you mortify anger? Well, I did it because I was mad, or I slapped him, or, or I, I did this, or I, I slapped her, or I punched her because I was angry. Well, can you cut off anger? But you can mortify it. You know, you can cause it to die, but it's internal. It's more, in other words, it's not surgical. It's more medical. So what does that mean? That means that there are certain things that you have to just uh, uh, overcome, and you have to know how to overcome them. You know. Well, you say, well, how do we how do we overcome them? Okay, I'm glad you asked that, because I'm gonna show you exactly how. Go to the book of Philippians, the second chapter, and in the book of Philippians, the second chapter, it says, wherefore Paul writing to the saints the believers at Philippi. He said, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, because, see, some people are so sanctified in church, but as soon as they get out of church, another spirit overtakes them. You know, so, but now much more in my absence. Hear what it says. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that you work for your salvation, but yet there are some things that you can allow God to do, amen, like your anger. You know, and, and, and when you uh, repent and, 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 and you tell God that, that you're sorry, he will help you. That's what the Bible said the comforter is. The paraclete, he comes along beside you and gives you the strength so you don't get mad. You get into the word and find out that, that anger is the result of a lot of things. There are a lot of people, jails are filled with people that, that resulted in anger. They shot somebody, they stabbed somebody, or, or they, you know, those kind of things. Anger causes those kind of things. And so the thing is, is that, <clears throat> go to the next verse. So we got to allow God, the word of God's going to work in you because God wants to bring you. When you were born, remember I shared with you once before that you came into the world speaking lies. You don't have to. That's the nature of a person that don't know God. So you need to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the more that you know of God, the bigger God gets. And God loves you, loves me. Amen. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And you are a believer. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We, uh, 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 greater is he, the scripture says, that's in me, that he that's in the world. So I'm not going to let, amen, somebody else cause me to get angry or cause me to uh, take my pride. How do you get rid of pride? What I want. I don't care. You know? Okay, so it says, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will 
and to do of his good pleasure. See, because God wants to bring you to a place. Amen. And God will use people. Amen. Uh, oftentimes, but, uh, you know, if I had time, I'd tell you about the angels that are ministering spirits to everybody that's saved. We got angels that, that minister to us. Amen. I've met some of my angels, and one of these days I'm going to tell you about some of the angels that I've met. Amen. Elder Julius Gooden was an angel that led me uh, 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 there in the result that I'm here as a result of it. Amen. So there are angels that God, uh, uh, so God is working for us. Angels are ministering spirit. They will help us. And you need to be introduced about how that angels operate in the word of God. You know, and so, <clears throat> so he's going to help you do uh, his good pleasure, what God wants you to do. Amen. And so what we need to do is to allow God to, to work us in, in us. Okay, now, <clears throat> I do want to go to the book of Hebrews because this is where I, I want to kind of spend a little time. Because, see, first of all, we do it by amputation, getting rid of the things that don't help us in our progress, in our development of going forward, and trying to overcome the circumstances. Because, see, the Bible says all you have to do is live godly, and you're going to be persecuted. Amen. Jesus say, in this world you shall have tribulation. He say, but be of good cheer. Because he's showing us how to overcome, amen, this stuff that we deal with down here as a believer. The more you know of God, the bigger God gets in, in your life. The more you can depend on him, the more you can trust on him, the more you can rely upon him, the more you can say, let God be true, but let every man be a liar. Amen. So, so therefore, the Bible said, now, now notice this, and, and, and I want you to catch this because it is very important. It says, wherefore, and I'm going to tell you what it's, what it's there for, uh, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, you see, there, there's people in heaven, amen, that's, that's, that's watching us down here on this earth. Let us lay aside. So he's telling the believer to lay aside, what did he say? Every weight. So you got to lay aside weights. And then it says, in the sin which does so easily beset us. So there are some things in life that are sins. And some things are weights. Well, let me just say this to you. There's a big difference between what is a weight and what is a sin. Now, all sins are weights. All sins are weights. See, whenever you're, you're in sin, there's only one release for sin, and that is confession and forsaking. Say, those that confess it and forsake it, they shall have mercy. And that's not getting what you deserve. Amen. That's what mercy is. Grace is, is getting what you don't deserve. Okay, so there's a difference between grace and mercy, but that just like there's a difference between weights and sin. Not all weights are sins, but all sins are weights. You can't, you can't run this race with sin in your life. Amen. You, you'll still be in the wilderness, going around and around in the wilderness with, with, with sins in your life. You know, because there's a consequence to sin. You know, and anyway, uh, but every, every weight is not a sin. So it says, let us lay aside every weight. Well, what are you talking about? Well, for an example, here is a weight. Do you think that it's wrong to be a slave to your business? You just started a business, and you are a slave to your business because you want to make your business a success. And uh, is, it, uh, uh, is it wrong for you to do that? Is it wrong for you to put your work above your family? Is that, is that wrong? Is that, is that a, a, a weight? You know, that you spend all your time working. I can give you an example of, of a woman that uh, loved uh, spending money. And she, when she married this man, she, she told him, I, I, I need uh, to buy things. I like things. 
So he went out and got a, another job so he could supply because he loved her and he wanted to supply all the things that she wanted. And then she wanted a divorce because she was getting everything she wanted. She told him he didn't spend no time with a man working two jobs and a part-time job. So therefore, that became a weight in that relationship and caused them to divorce. There are some things like if you put your job above your kids, that's a weight. If you put your, your job, okay, here, here, in the church sometimes, you know, you want to help everybody else. You want to go out and you want to uh, feed the poor. You want to do this and do this and neglect cleaning your own house. Or you want to kiss all the other kids in the neighborhood and don't kiss your own kids. You know, those things are not sins in themselves, but they are weights. And they're going to stop your progress from, amen, doing the things that God wants you to do. Because these things are weighting you down. And when you are weighted down, it says we can't run with patience the race that we are to run. Because I'm weighted down. I spend more time on my job than I spend with my family. I spend more time, amen, getting money than to getting the quality of my children. I don't, I don't communicate with my children. They only see me uh, when I come in to change clothes to do this or do that, you know. And, and, and uh, when I see somebody else's kid, oh, what a beautiful little kid. And then you go home and, and shrug your own children. You know I'm telling the truth. And so what I'm saying, these things are not sins, but they're weights. They'll weight you down because of your responsibility. If those things that you're responsible for, because there's only 24 hours in a day. If you spend eight hours working, it's going to probably take you a couple of hours to get back and forth to work or uh, whatever, you know, and you sitting up in front of a TV or you sitting up praying, playing uh, uh, whatever those games are and you ain't got no relationship with your children. You can't talk to them because you're always busy or you got to watch your shows. And so those things, my brother and my sisters, are nothing but weights. And what they do is they hinder our, our spiritual growth. Now, I'm going to give you scripture for that. And I'm going to show you that <clears throat> the Bible says that we can't run the race that is set before us with patience. Because we are trying to do everything instead of being, amen, what God wants us to be. You know, we need to learn how to, amen, spend time praying with us. When is the last time that you sat at the table with your family? And you had a, a meal together. Because usually if you go into a home, and uh, I'm on this phone, they're on that phone, that phone, and we communicate by texting in our own home. This has gotten outrageous. That's why there's no communi communications. And a family can't grow together until they start communicating to one another. You grow up and the internet is training your children. The internet and all the information there. So what I'm saying to you is that God wants us to develop spiritually. And I want to go to 1 Peter 2, 2, and I just want to quickly show you what God says. He says, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word. This word right here. Because he says, this is heaven's going to pass away and the earth is going to pass away but his word shall never pass away. If God said it, Numbers 23, I think it's 19, says that, uh, Numbers 23, 19 said that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. And then I think it's in Titus uh, 1, 2, it says that uh, God cannot lie. So if God said it, God's going to do it. So the Bible says, desire the sense of milk. Are you desiring your job more? You're spending more time with people on your job than you are with your family? That you may grow thereby. So a baby begins to grow. But a baby sometimes need, we need to be exercised with meat of the word and not just milk of the word. 
because milk of the word is what you feed babies. We need to get into the word and allow the word of God to get us. So there are some things, that's how we can overcome the flesh. We can overcome the flesh by amputating the things in our life that's not pleasing to God. And I know that you, my brother and my sister, you know things. Because the Bible says it's the goodness of God, God's goodness, that leads us to change. He wants all of us to be saved. God's will that none, not one person should ever perish. And I told you before that hell is paved with good intentions. People that end up there never thought that they were going to end up there. We've got to be like newborn babes to desire the sincere milk of the word so that we can grow, we can get stronger, we can build, amen, stronger foundations. We can build stronger lives of our families that we can be usually not the majority, but we can be the remnant that God is calling for. We can be in this world, but we don't have to be of the system of this world. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. So therefore, you've got to grow, grow from the milk of the word and let the spirit of God lead you and guide you. That's God's will. We pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. He's going to help us to complete his will because he loved us while we were yet sinners. And so, my brother and my sisters, I pray, God, that uh, you learn how to deal with the, that fleshly nature because it's the spirit is going to fight against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. But you can surrender and live in the promises of God. So I want to pray with you tonight, and I want to pray that you take advantage of the opportunities that God has set before you. Don't get involved in weights that take away your responsibility. You have a responsibility to your husband. Husbands, you have a responsibility to your wives. And you too, husband and wife, have a responsibility to your children. Don't expect them to do what they don't see you doing. So let us get rid of the weights and, of course, the sin that does so easily beset us that we can run with patience the race that is set before us. And I want to pray with you that God will strengthen you. And I want to pray, amen, for, again, the Goodwin family. Help them, Lord, I pray you comfort them in the name of Jesus. Bind every hindering spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, and let your word be a lamp unto our feet and let it be a light unto our path. Strengthen us in the areas of our weakness. We do fall short of thy expectation. We are weak when we ought to be strong. We are foolish when we ought to be wise. Fearful when we need to be courageous. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.